Hey, Tobes. You looking good in your bow tie. Laying, I'm surprised he's not laying in the sun. It is freaking cold out here. About 39 right now. Too much. Not into it. Can I help you? Can I help you? Trying to walk here, Turbo. Yeah, 39 right now. Low to night of 28 degrees. It's time. Much earlier than ever before. Never moved the plants in this early, but can't control the weather. Here we are. It's what's happening. I already moved in a bunch of the, I guess I should say, hey, what's up, Gardener Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. We'll just go with that. I'm great. That's cool. I already moved the majority of the smaller plants inside and like things that would be hard to replace, val valuable plants like the Thai. That went in about a week ago. Need to go around and see what's left. I'm not, not everything is coming in. There are plenty of plants out here. I didn't clarify this in the last video and it left some people confused. I'm only moving in the things that I need to move in. There are plenty of plants out here that look tropical, but can handle 27 degrees, no problem. It's gonna be 27 one night, 26 and 25, and then it's gonna warm back up. And hello, shadow, sorry about that. Angle of the sun, can't do much about it. Mule palm. That can stay outside. The other mill palm over there, it can stay. Windmill palms, they can stay. The bamboo, they're going to be fine. Pendo, it can stay. Bismarckia, it'll be totally fine. The Mataf... I've let it take some cold before, but I'm not going to let it... Not this time. It's, it's going to come in. Dracaena Draco, that's got to come in. Don't want to forget that. I won't forget that. When I pull the Eureka palm out, that has to go in. I'll see that back there. I'll remember the ginger... I really like this. This was that green mountain ginger, but like my mind wasn't blown by it. And every single plant that comes in there, like I need to love the plant. So I don't know. I gave it a shot. I'm not crazy about it. So I don't think it's going to come in. I'm going to take in most of the hibiscus. I have two standards back here. There's an orange and a pink that's going to come in. I have this yellow right here and this one's called Sealy Teeny something like that. I'm not sure but that's what that one is. I'll take that in. Pakistakis Ludia it's got to go. Croton I'll, I'll take it in. Why not? And then I, there's a hibiscus tree back here that's not looking fantastic. It just didn't get the sun that it needs but I think I'm going to go back there and pull that up. The Abulatin wasn't crazy about it. Gave it a shot. Not my favorite plant. I think it would have looked a lot nicer had it gotten more pruning, but then it wouldn't have gotten the sun because it needed to get up higher. I'll probably try another variety someday because there are tons, tons of bulletins to choose from. They have some really neat flowers on them. This one, I don't know, it just wasn't it for me, but I did like it. It was cool and I'm glad that I grew it. Just don't feel a need to hold on to it. So I'm going to start gathering plants. I'm going to throw them on the cart, get them down here into that corner. And uh, that's the main thing I need to get through. And I need to get it done fairly fast, too. So I'm not much of it I'll be vlogging. We do this every year, though. So I'll make sure that last year's video of moving the plants inside is down there. And I have a whole video on how I set up the grow space. So you can watch that if you have been wondering. The Alexander Palm. I'm still waiting to hear back from the people who are supposed to take that plant. Hopefully they're trying to figure something out because this... Uh, 27 degrees or 28 whatever it's supposed to be tonight i got the pool heater cranked up full blast that's going to help but not a ton i don't think it's going to help that high up in the air things down lower maybe i mean heat rises but hmm. i'm not going to get into all of that until i have to so i'm going to occupy my mind get busy oh you know what keep telling myself don't forget about these every single time i go past here i mean to reach in and get these gingers out and I forget, unless I potted them in there. No, I didn't. I did want to hold on to these Alpinias, so I'm going to pull those before I forget. It's really easy. We <laughs> move in lots and lots of plants to think you've got it all down. And then the next day you come outside and you go, uh-oh, forgot about that one. I'd rather that not happen with these. These are some nice looking Alpinias, like the variegation on them. And uh, they're a plant where it's kind of hard to predict the supply on them. Some years I can find them, no problem, for really cheap. And some years they're really tiny and really pricey. May as well take them in. At the very least can hold on to the rhizomes and get them going again next year. But I don't feel like keeping up with them and keeping them, you know, growing all winter long. All right, time to start moving some plants.
Anybody remember what this was? Caladium radiance, maybe? I don't remember, whatever it was, it looked nice. Eureka palm's going and I almost forgot to make sure the Eureka palm gets a shot of attention here before it gets surrounded by all the other plants and you can't really see it, it's full glory. I know it's leaning right now, but it still looks nice. Look how easy this is to move. Isn't that fantastic? Gotta love a nice cart. I'm putting this somewhere different this year and uh, well, actually probably shouldn't be recording while I'm doing this, should be paying closer attention. Last week showed everybody all the little plants piled up over here because I have some new shelving coming in so they can't go up onto their shelves yet. Normally the Eureka palm goes right here on that side of the pond. I'm thinking this year, which I've never done this before, but it just makes the most sense to me to go with right here. Welcome to some randomness. It's the next day. Plants are in. We had some cold last night. You can kind of see some of it over here on the elephant ears. Things got kind of crispy as they do with frost. The sensors I have out here showed 30.1, I think is the coldest it got back here in the area, St. Louis area, I think it got down to 28. I took a sprinkler head, have it on a stake here, and when this turns on it, triggers backwards so that when my sensors, or the one sensor that I have out here, when that hits a certain point, it alerts my phone, wakes me up, I open up my rain app or my sprinkler app, was able to turn that on when it got to 31. And I kept doing that throughout the night to make sure this stayed wet, keeping the plant wet helps keep the ice off of it. Or I know that that sounds counterintuitive, but it's it's the way to go. Looks okay. I mean, I don't see any damage on it, but cold damage with a light frost can take a pretty long time to show. I talked to the company yesterday and they said they'd get back to me, didn't hear back from them. So I called them back and they said that they're still trying to get a hold of the grain company. And I said, okay, I, I guess I'm just going to have to hope for the best, but here we are day two low tonight is 25 and the low tomorrow night is 24 and then it's gonna warm back up and the palm tree would have been all the plants could have stayed out here except for these three nights here i i'm just the nature of the beast it gets cold these things happen but it you know it's not on me to run their business and make sure that they have a crane lined up to come out here that's on them they're supposed to do that and now i'm stuck trying to figure out what you know, what the hell am I supposed to do with this thing? I don't think that blasting water on it if it gets down to 25 is going to make a tremendous difference. Probably not. I've measured every tarp I have, every frost blanket, every sheet. I don't have anything that's big enough to get up and around that thing, and I don't even know how I would do it. And don't worry, we'll get into the growth space, and hopefully there will be a happier ending to the video at some point. Today's Tuesday. Uh, video doesn't have to come out till Saturday, so there's still a lot that can happen this week. <laughs> like, hopefully a crane will get out here and get this thing out of my yard, dead or alive. I don't want it here. I really don't want it out here if it's dead. That's what's going to make me sad to look at it all the time, and I'd prefer it go off to storage. But here's the thing, though. If it does get down to 25 tonight... I don't want to pay to store this thing. It costs a lot of money to have somebody come out here, pick this thing up, and store it for several months when it, it's probably going to die. So I have decisions I have to make here. And not going to lie, the channel, the YouTube thing, adds a whole different element of pressure. It's just, I don't, this isn't something I want to have to talk about. It's not something I want to have to deal with with a large group of people because there are going to be people who are mad at me even though I did not do anything wrong here. This is on the company. But I'm sure there will be comments saying that I should have like constructed a greenhouse out here or something to put over the plant, which if I were going to do that sort of thing, I wouldn't be paying to store the plant if I were willing to go to those types of lengths. Uh, I think what I'm going to try to do, this is a long shot, it's probably not going to happen, and it's going to be pretty dangerous. Probably shouldn't do it. I'm going to come in here with a shovel, loosen the backfill out of here that I filled in in the springtime when I put this palm tree in and I'm going to try and lay this down across the ground. If I can get it laid down, then I can get some frost claws over it and get up in the attic and get all the different Christmas lights out, like anything that I can plug in that'll put off heat. I'm going to put on this thing and I'm getting ahead of myself. First, I need to see if I can lay this thing down. I, I don't know if I can. I know I really shouldn't. It's definitely not going to be safe, uh, but it does, like it has some wiggle no, i don't think so i think that that's that's too far down there in the ground to get it at that kind of a tilt no, i'm gonna try I, I don't see it happening but we we'll, we will see oh, fuck. yeah all right turns out i think i might be able to do it it's just getting kind of nervous because i don't want this thing to come crashing down on me that will be painful 
and you know possibly deadly we'll see <laughs> that was very heavy and pot was full of water i had the sprinkler running through it all night long uh this is this is good news <laughs> i am tempted to see if i can roll it and get it into the garage but that's it's it's a bad idea. I'd have to take most of the plants out to get this in without knocking everything over. It's, that's I'm not going to do that. And uh, I don't think I could roll this very much without doing a lot of damage to the trunks on here. I think I should move forward with the plan. That was very heavy. Oh, look at it hanging out, taking a little nap over there. All right, I got to get up in the attic, find some frost cloth, lights, get moving on all that. Hey, Pumpkin, you say hi? Hi, Pumpkin. Can you kiss? All right, steps ones and two, ones and twos, ones and, gotten to move on things. Pulled the fronds. I'm very frazzled right now. It's gonna be difficult to talk through this all and I'm trying to move very quickly because it's getting cold. Pulled the fronts together as tight as I could. I ran out of cords, so that's going to have to do. I stuffed a little bit of cloth on the inside as well to help insulate the inside of the palm tree. And then I have C7 lights, which put out a good amount of heat running up and down the trunk. That's all I have, and I haven't seen Christmas lights for sale anywhere recently, because, you know, it's October. So no lights out. This is this is the way things are moving. I have more lights piled up down here around the root ball. Going to have another pass in the attic, see if I can find anything else that actually works. This has been a good project for getting rid of old lights, since I've been switching over to LEDs over the last few years. Frost cloths. Going to go around the outside of those and then I have all the old plastic that I used to use to wrap the grow space with. I drape that across. If I'm able to figure it out, which I probably will be able to, I'm going to try and have a gap that opens over the water here, which a little bit, I, I'm going back and forth on that one because doing that means more space for air to move around in here, but the water's warm. It's 96 degrees in there right now. That heater's been running. So the steam that comes off there is going to help keep the inside of this warm. I thought about throwing a space heater in there, but I just don't feel safe with that. This palm tree is not worth that risk to me at all. If this were a long-term thing, which could that could never be a thing here in St. Louis, not like this anyways, I would do the frost cloth first and then do the lights over it because having the lights actually on the trunk of the palm, these can burn the plant. Uh, they can also melt the plastic too, though. So it's not a bad idea to have a barrier around them and be watchful because it is somewhat hazardous. It's something to be cautious about. Okay, I'm gonna dig around for some more lights and then get this wrapped up with frost cloth <laughs> and uh, see if I can get enough plastic draped over this thing to at least help insulate it. I thought about cutting all the bananas down and pulling this up into the berm there because I feel like the cement this hard surface is going to lose warmth much faster than the ground is over there. But if it's that far away, I'm not going to be able to get heat in from the water. And the ground's still fairly warm. Best I can do is, I know there's spots where the plastic's not coming down. There are three layers of plastic on here. Every bit of frost cloth that I have, there are many, many, many layers on there. Hopefully it doesn't start a fire on the frost cloth. I guess we'll find out. At least it's surrounded by wet ground and everything. And uh, I just have to hope for the best. I put a temperature sensor dangling in the middle there. I went the heaviest with the frost cloth across the top trunk because that's the one that's going to be the most exposed. The ones that are down here, the two trunks on the ground, they at least are going to get some warmth from the ground. I didn't have enough plastic to drape that over to the pool, but this should be okay. Watch it not even get that cold. Watch the forecast be completely wrong after doing all of this, but you know, I guess better safe than sorry. Well, Y'all can't say I didn't try. Back up whenever I can give another update. Hopefully tomorrow, sooner than later. <sighs> Good morning. You coming, Turbs? Yeah, let's go outside. Wait, 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 come on. Have a seat. Where are your manners? Sit. Now you're free. Go on. Good boy. Been working on that thing so he doesn't run through the doors. He knocked my ass over the other day. He was running right past me. He's too much dog for that. It's, it's morning, hence why I said good morning. It got very cold out here last night. The weather apps say that it got down to 23 in my area, like in my county of St. Louis. But then the sensor right here, the coldest temperature it showed was, I think it was 29. And I have another one of these hanging out in the middle in here. Coldest temperature it showed was 49. So this, 
This was, I, well, I think it was a success. I can't say for sure. Now that this is out of the ground, they shouldn't need a crane for it. The company's heading over here to come get it now. They weren't able to get a crane to come out until next week, which honestly doesn't even matter at this point. The coldest temperatures have passed. It's only supposed to get warmer from here and on, but I don't want a palm tree laying on my ground until they can get out here. And since they didn't bring a crane the first time, assuming they could get it, I would assume that that means they think they can get it when it's laying on the ground. I don't know. I've reached the point of I've done enough. I don't have a lot of time, though, so this is going to be the last of the palm tree. I'm going to unwrap it, and if I have time, I'll show you what it looks like underneath here. I got to get this thing unwrapped, get all the everything off of it. It's going to take a minute. They're on their way over here. There's the ending to the palm tree drama. Hopefully the ending. There could be a dead palm tree under here. I don't know why there would be when the sensor says 49, but uh, 49 degrees shouldn't be a problem. I have a pot here that I need to glue back together. Good thing I never got around to doing that or else I wouldn't have had these little shards to lay there to hold the plastic down. Eh, f it. One more thing to glue together. No big deal. Last look. Not seeing any damage. Got some bugs in it, but that's nothing that can't be fixed. This some spray. Might be a little bit of frost damage on that inner frond, but the spear looks totally fine. I think we're good. I would be surprised if there's any damage on here that would kill this plant. Okay, what now? I haven't seen this view in a while. Several months. It feels pretty good to be back in the grow space. Gonna have to get used to adjusting for the different lighting and all of those things, but it feels cozy in here. Not that I don't love the, I prefer to be outside, but it just feels good to have everything in here. And I was about to say place to right. It's not, it's, it's a total freaking disaster over there. Dracaena Draco, that's going to go in the house. It's an easy house plant that doesn't need to be out here. <laughs> the outdoor shower. It's just hanging out in here because I had to bring it in because you know, it got really cold and I didn't want any of the pipes to freeze. I need to drain that out, take it apart and put it away until spring. The tie, that's going to go on the other side. Croton, I need to straighten that out and replace the grow light that's above that, which I'll be able to do here fairly shortly because I have a whole bunch of grow lights coming in the mail. So I can get started on that next week. Have some hibiscus back here that I think I think this spot should work for them. I've traditionally had hibiscus, like right, right about in this corner here. And they usually grow and flower and do fine. Directly behind the pond, there's a lot of splatter from that water. I meant to turn that off. If that's really annoying, I'm so sorry. I'll get it shut off when I walk back around. It's a lot of splatter. Hibiscus, they tend to like to be more on the dry, like consistently moist, not sopping wet during the winter time. And I will let them go on to the drier side of things. If it's not warm, that new heater that I got last year keeps things pretty toasty in here. Between 77 and 84 is generally where I like to keep it. Sometimes I'll go through spells where I'll drop it lower than that for a few weeks. I'm trying to spur something to flower like some of the orchids. Regardless of that, I still don't think that they're going to appreciate having constant splatter down there onto their roots. But that's, we'll talk about that in a minute. Just working my way over here from the desk so I could explain what's happening with all this mess. So when the forecast called for that hard frost a few days ago, I just started moving things in and threw, I threw them on the ground. I didn't want to put them all up on the shelves because I'm waiting on, or was waiting, it showed up now, a new rack that's going to go over here so I can have better organization with the plants. So I set them on the ground. I don't really know what I was thinking, to be honest. I was just like, get them in, set them down, and move on. It was a last minute thing. It was baseball going on. I wanted to watch the game. It was a, a big deal game for St. Louis. Didn't want to miss it. And I'm glad that I didn't. So now, not happening in this video, but when we get back to doing stuff in the videos where I'm in here in the grow space, I'm going to be clearing all this out, setting up a new rack. It's bigger than the other one that's over there. It's going to be about the same size as these tables, actually. Get the new drainage trace set up. I have some ebb and flow kits that I may end up using over there, which is like a system that allows water to drain from one row to another to another. And you can hook it to a circulation pump and keep the water moving through if that's something you'd want to do. Oh, and that's why the tie is just sitting over here in this corner because I need to clear out everything over there and get the new rack set up before I can get that moved over. It sounds like a lot. It's really not. I'm thinking like an hour's worth of work, if even. It shouldn't be that bad. This, okay, right, I forgot. Need to go ahead and come in here and put this down there. Maybe that'll make less noise. Yeah, 
not quite as loud. I think that's probably better for the audio. So this is, it's not set up, so don't judge it by its appearance yet. I, there's just a few things sitting on here right now. The ebb and flow kit. So I can water from the top, the water will drain down to the next one, drain down to the next one. I could put a reservoir underneath here with a pump that will move it back up. Keep the water flowing through everything. The only reason that I may end up doing that, the reservoir and circulation thing, I'm definitely going to do the drain situations so that water can more neatly be carried out of here instead of just kind of flooding all over the place. Last winter, I tried using this product right here called Bactiv. It's just Bacillus thuringius. This is a powdered form of what's inside of those mosquito dunks or the mosquito granules. They work really well for fungus gnats. I say really well. The mosquito dunks and mosquito bits, kind of, I haven't had the best luck with those to get rid of the fungus gnats. They help, but with this many plants, you need so much. I don't know if I have a, do I have a package of that left to, no, I don't. I thought maybe I had a package of the pellets left so I could read off how much you have to use like per gallon of water. It's a lot. But with this right here, this powder, and just mix it in with the water, water it into the plants, and then maybe have it recirculate and that will help a lot with the fungus gnats. In the meantime, sticky traps, totally fine. Haven't really seen any fungus gnats yet, but they'll show up. It gets pretty humid in here. It's not terribly humid right now. Is it, is it 53%? Not much. That's just because this is a new humidistat. I just set this up last night and I need to set a new level on here. I'm gonna prefer to keep the humidity around 70, maybe 75 to 80. For my own comfort, I'd prefer it be more around 70. Right now when it drops below 50, that kicks on and humidifies the area. It doesn't have to run all that often. The heater that's up here, there it is. There's the heater. That blows warm air down right onto this water. It evaporates and that has actually been a pretty good system for keeping things nice and humid out here. It's also why I have that waterfall situation going on. This, speaking of the waterfall and all that noise, you didn't know this is a reservoir that I use to water the plants. There are a couple fish in here. I don't know where they came from. I think that they came in with a couple of pond plants a few years ago. It's like a couple of little goldfish and some guppies. I'd like to catch them out of there and do something else with those because this, it's, I don't, I don't like being out here and inhaling vaporized fish crap. I don't think that's healthy. I like the water to be more clean than it is right now. So as it is right now, I don't hang out here if that ultrasonic humidifier is running. So it's, you know, it's just, putting all the stuff in the water into particles that can get in your lungs. I don't, I don't know, it doesn't seem like a smart thing to be dealing with. Back to the rack, trying to stay focused here. This is, well, you can see it's wonky. It's crooked, it's weird. It's been like that for a couple of years. The new one just showed up in the mail today that is slightly larger than this, just a smidge shorter, and uh, it will give me more space for plants on top and more surface area to have the cloth run across the top of that water moving across it, which is what helps keep the humidity up. That's what's going on there. I know it may seem like I was unprepared to bring in the plants, which technically, okay, fair, I was, but I had everything ready to be ordered in a spreadsheet. And my plan was to make sure I ordered everything to be here by the last week of October. Not thinking that I was gonna have to move the plants inside October 14th through the 17th was when I was working on all this or more like the what the 19th, if you're counting how long it took them to come and get the Alexander Palm. So yeah, it's just really early. I have everything, it's sitting inside. I think that that would be a better thing to do in a separate video, like cleaning and tidying and getting racks, all those improvements, and then new lights that are going to go up. So waiting on a couple more of those to show up in the mail. I was gonna film installing the humidistat. I didn't know if anybody would care about that. It's an Inkbird humidistat. That's, I mean, there's not much to it. You plug it in and hook your humidifier to it and you set the values, get it hooked up with your Wi-Fi and everything so you can access it through your phone. That's pretty much all there is. Didn't seem like it would be the most exciting thing to watch. As far as the plants are concerned, everything looks pretty good. There might be some cold damage. There's going to be some leaf drop. That's just kind of nature of the beast when you move the plants from outside to inside. It's a drastic change. The croton in the back always drops a whole bunch. Won't be surprised by that. The ficus has been dropping leaves since I brought it home because it's a ficus. Don't know why I bought that thing. Really gonna regret that. The areca palm needs some thinning out. I don't like to keep a ton of foliage on the inside with these during the winter time because traditionally this plant has always been a mealy bug magnet <laughs> for me. Having it more open with less foliage on it, one, allows better airflow in the area, doesn't shade the plants underneath it. It makes it a lot easier for me to inspect the plant to keep the bugs off of them. Normally before I start moving plants inside, 
I have an entire like dis not disinfecting but a depesting process. I don't want to say pesticide because I'm not I don't really use the pesticides unless things get really really bad. Soaps and neems. I've done videos on it before. I was going to be doing that the week that all this cold happened. So they didn't get much, but the pests weren't that bad this year. I was pretty about staying on top of the neems and the soaps. I haven't seen a mealybug in a while, so I don't, I don't want to jinx it. But that problem, my, I'm not even going to finish that sentence. There's a lot of plants here. I'm sure there'll be mealybugs. I've already had to spray for some aphids. That's just nature of the beast when you have a lot of plants and they're this close together. It's not usually advisable to have the plants crammed this close together. You want more air around them and then they don't just pass diseases and bugs around to each other as quickly. But hey, it's what we gotta do when you love plants and you have a whole bunch of them. This will be much more open <laughs> once I get all the stuff on the ground up onto the shelves and then I'll get the bigger plants spaced out better and maybe be able to get back there and get all those cords and things organized that kind of got lost in all the ruckus while I was trying to get the Christmas lights hooked up around the Alexander Palm. Speaking of Alexander Palm, it's, I didn't say this. So when I opened the door and I said, okay, what next? It's the next day. <laughs> I had just walked from the house out here. They did come and get the Alexander pump. So it's gone now. I guess I can just go out there and show you. I'm not certain what it is I'm showing you. It's, it's, it's nothing. There it is. There's nothing. They came and picked it up. Since it was out of the ground, didn't need a crane. So that made things a lot easier. And they just threw it on a truck. Palm trees are gone. Some frost damage on the bananas. Not much. There's... These look pretty bad, but that's because when I had the Alexander palm laying here, these were in my way, so I was just, I, mean, I, <laughs> I did that. That was me. It was in my way, so I just bent it over. It doesn't matter, because in like a week or two, I'm going to have to cut all these down and mulch them anyway, so I figured I might as well just break it down, get it out of there. These are looking kind of sad, but that's not surprising at all. Some of the flowers actually in the far back, where things are much more protected, are still coming out. And some of them, the rest of them, they're done flowering, and when they're done flowering, not the nicest looking plants to have around. They look kind of messy. If we had a longer growing season, I'd cut those off and I think it would look a lot nicer. But as it is for now, I think it's best to go ahead and just leave everything together so the plants can do what they want. You see the book, it's not a bumblebee. It's a nice one. So when you get further in, the ones that are a little more sheltered, still looking pretty good. I don't expect things to stay looking nice <laughs> this time of year, almost just tripped over one of Turbo's toys. We're to the point where things are going to start stalling in their growth and dying back. So, you know, burnt leaves, dying flowers, that's just fall. Pool pot still looks pretty good. Well, at least the side, the side that was near the pool looks pretty good. It's a big difference there, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. The impatience and the petunias still doing their thing. And you get over to this side where that warm air was just blowing right past the pot and not really able to sit on it. And yeah. There's a little damage there, but again, it's fall, so that's just the way it goes. I don't mind it. I'm thrilled about having to move the plants in as early as I did, but is what it is. Just the way things went this year, and I think it's actually pretty nice to have that done. There's a lot of stuff to left to do inside, but otherwise, basically done. And now can get back to planting shrubs. So lots of shrubs to plant, still several palms outside, so I think that those are still looking nice. Everything still looks good. In fact, surprisingly good. I didn't bring everything in. I've made some decisions this year. Some things I had duplicates of. I didn't see a reason to have like three maculata begonias. It's not necessary. They just take up space. And I had some Alocasia odoras, Okinawa silvers that had reverted. Why bring them in? I, I don't want them anymore. There's no reason to take them in. And they, they're over there. They look totally fine. But I still think it was the right move moving the plants and considering you see the damage on the impatience, which they tend to be some of the first plants to show damage, but just to be safe, wasn't worth the risk. Everything's in there and uh, well, not done, just getting started, but hard part's over. It's not even hard. Every year I get comments from people saying, it seems like a lot of work, wouldn't it be easier to move? And I'm like, ah, I'd pack up my whole life, move cross country versus like two hours of work in the spring and two hours of work in the fall. I'm gonna say, nah, it's not that bad moving the plants in and out. I enjoy it. Oh. Those impatience are looking kind of sad. Anyways, I, I'm going to say that's enough. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below, say hi. I know this cold's been hitting a lot of random areas. What's been going on in your yards with your plants? Got fun plants for Halloween? Oh, no, that's the next video, not this one. All right, so hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.